That is an interesting solution. Indeed, it looks a bit like a giant Lego brick, if I may say so myself. Uh, well, <laughs> to tell us more about this technology, uh, we have Maurice van Gamere here at the table, commercial manager of Value Maritime. Welcome. Thank you. So, Maurice, what do you call the system? We call the system a filtry because we filter uh, sulfur, particular matters, the black stuff, basically, and uh, eventually CO2 out of the exhaust gas. And uh, how does it compare to, to it, it's a bit of a similar to scrubber technology. How does it compare to the traditional scrubber technology? The technology is, is um, very different um, in the sense that we, di we use a different technology. Um, that's why we use less electricity. Um, we don't see many, we don't see much uh, corrosion, erosion, and we actually outperform most of the scrubber uh, solutions that are on the market right now. And we can fit our system on small and medium-sized vessels. Um, besides that, we also now have the, the possibility to capture CO2. And uh, that's, I think, the, the main the interesting point at this, at this moment. And how quick is the installation of the system? Uh, we say normally uh, between 10 and 14 days, so normally normal docking period. We actually did one here in Rotterdam within seven days. That was with a very experienced crew, but uh, yeah. And can it help uh, older vessels continue operating for longer? Because Definitely. We, have, we are seeing the uh, emission restrictions being more strict each year. Yes. Yeah, definitely. We see definitely a, a big market on, on retrofit. That's also where we started, mostly. Um, the first reason that people choose our system was to, uh, to save money because they can burn HFO. Uh, but we also see now with the CO2 capture possibilities and uh, because we just received an approval in principle from Lloyd's on our carbon capture system, which might uh, allow our system to be taken in consideration in CII calculation. And that will definitely help uh, uh, ship owners with older vessels to prolong the time they can keep sailing the vessels on the, on the same speed. And I did ask this question previously to our previous guest, but is there a limit, an age limit to a vessel that, that you can install the system on? No, actually not. The system is, uh, you can install it on older vessels, the advantage of our system is that you can potentially also take, in, take the system off uh, to put it on, on a new build, for example. We see some owners that are uh, considering that. Uh, but definitely for older vessels, it's a, it's a solution. Yeah. So they can basically plan ahead if, if they consider running a vessel and then selling it or scrapping it and then using the system on a new build. Yes, although we see that people who buy vessels with our system, they like this, to buy this vessel with the system as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that is uh, possible. Have you already had inquiries from the MPP and project cargo sector? Yeah, we see uh, uh, for multi-purpose vessels, we, we, are, uh, we have some clients there. Our first main clients were, were container feeders. Because of high consumption, uh, they could save a lot of money. But we see also definitely now multi-purpose owners that, that travel regularly to SECA areas, choosing, uh, choosing our system. And we have a lot of inquiries from RORO, uh, car carrier, Ropax uh, uh, vessels, because for them it's a really interesting solution. Uh, yeah. And can you show us maybe uh, uh, in, in some sort of a graphic how the, how the system functions? Yeah, so um, I think you can see the, um, oh, on the screen here uh, a container feeder. And on the back of the funeral there's a white backpack. That is the whole solution. That's where we capture the, the sulfur, the particular matters. Uh, uh, and the oil residues, and then eventually the CO2. Um, that, that's basically all. all. Uh, um, just to give you a bit of an in, insight in the, in the system itself. So the exhaust gas enters from the top. That's definitely different than other systems. Uh, uh, water gets injected. We, uh, we enter water. Then it get, goes into the, the gray drum. That's where we wash it. The, the exhaust gas gets in contact with the seawater. Um, we have a system that maximizes the contact time, it slowly rotates, and then what comes out of it is dirty water. That's on the green bottom right or left. Uh, you can see some green tubing. That's where the dirty water comes out. We continuously wash that, so then all the particular matters, the oil residues, stay in a, in a filter. And then we dilute the water before it goes overboard, and then it's uh, pH 6. Um, and that's how we, uh, what we do with the water. Um, that's why we also call it a clean loop system. Um, what we then do on the other side is that's where, where the gas comes out. That's the red duct that you can see on the side. Um, 
maybe that's it's good to add, add this as well. Um, the red duct, that's where the gases come out. That is where we capture the CO2. We add uh, liquid there in it, and that only captures CO2. We pump the liquid into or a tank container or a designated tank. That's where we store the liquid. Uh, and that's where we, yeah, that's where we basically uh, capture the CO2. But this is all. This is all the whole box. This is our solution. That's why we, why we can see why we can quickly install it. Um, here you can see it. You want me to continue with the uh, Yes, this? please. Yeah? <laughs> um, so I think to, to complete the, 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 the system, you see the ship the, with the system on, on the back. You can clearly see the, the pipe with the three-way valve that uh, uh, directs the, the exhaust gas into the system. And you can also see on the side this, this uh, aluminium-colored uh, duct. Uh, that's where the gases come out. And in the middle, you see what else uh, uh, an installation implies for your vessel. So you have the system, and you have a, a, a supply pipe and an overboard. And that's basically it. Um, we don't use much electricity because we have few pumps. Um, and uh, on the right, we have a, an, ex an overboard for some of the, 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 the viewers that have experience with scrubbers. Um, yeah, we don't see any any problems with, uh, with corrosion or erosion and are the overboard of this vessel that installed the, the system a couple of years ago, for me, yeah, clearly shows it. Uh, and you also mentioned <coughs> the ability to capture CO2 is yeah. it captured in batteries and tanks. Now, is there an infrastructure for you to enable the client to replace the batteries, discharge them, and how does this uh, work? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, at this moment, uh, all the, the, the owners that buy a system buy it together with the CO2 model. At this moment, there's no uh, incentive yet to capture CO2, but all owners see the benefit of it, uh, so they already installed the model. We have some owners, for marketing purposes or other reasons, they already start using our system, and for them, um, most of them are uh, container feeders, and they store the, the CO2 together with the liquid in a container, in a, in a battery, um, and that we bring, maybe I, I think it make it a bit more visual, um, here you can see the, the cycle. So there we store the, the liquid together with the CO2 in ISO 10 containers, and that we bring to an outlet. There are a few outlets, greenhouses, uh, methanol factories, uh, and you can put it under the ground. Uh, the most uh, used at this moment in our network is the greenhouse, uh, and we provide the network. So we uh, give the service to the owner that we take off the, 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 the battery, the container, or we debunker the liquid, and we bring it to an outlet, and we give them new, uh, uh, new liquid. Uh, the advantage for us at this moment to, for, for our network is that uh, there's no incentive for, for uh, ship owners, but there is an incentive for greenhouse owners to have our system. In the Netherlands, we, uh, the, the greenhouse industry alone uses about 2 million tons of CO2, and at this moment, a lot they get from, uh, via pipelines from other industries, or they generate it themselves. Um, they do that with a gas engine, then uh, they use the gas engine mostly in the evening to deliver electricity, and then they lose the CO2 and have to run the, the engine again by day to get the CO2 to grow their crops. With our system, they can store their own CO2, and they have the possibility to use our CO2 when we present it to them. That's, of course, our idea of this. So we spread the network around, and we have now a network in the Netherlands that's already operating. We do that uh, here close by. Uh, we uh, get the containers off at the ECT, and then we bring it to a place, a, a greenhouse close by. And we're busy now in England, uh, in Germany, and in Scandinavian countries, and we're even in talks with the Brazilian greenhouse owners and the North American greenhouse owners. We and do this on demand from yeah. the client. And in terms of cost saving, how mm. much does it enable? So at this moment, the, the, the business case is uh, the filtry, because a, uh, a ship can use HFO. HFO, at this moment, yeah, is around uh, 400 euros cheaper than, uh, than uh, MGO. Um, so they, 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 for example, I use it here. We have a calculator at the website where you can quickly calculate uh, the savings. That is the business case, and this makes that you, you get the, the system paid back with, within two years. Also taking, taking into consideration the average uh, um, spread, the average difference, because it might not stay this way, the, the difference between HFO and MGO. But if you look at the average, 
you pay it back in two years, and after the two years, you start earning money. And for this vessel, it will be then around 3,000 euro um, um, per day that an, a ship owner saves. Um, for the CO2, that will be in the future when uh, the taxation comes in, so the ETS comes into play. The, the, um, we charge them a fee per ton of CO2 that's below the ETS price that they will need to, to pay. So that's incentives for the CO2. That's not yet there. There are, of course, for example, what we see with car carriers, they have a an, an cargo owner, for example, a big uh, car brand, that wants the whole tr uh, supply chain to, have a, a, um, to lower their CO2 foot footprint. They have a different incentive. But for, the general car for general cargo owners, that is not yet um, the case. And looking into the longer term, we hear that uh, many vessel owners and for the for the new builds are uh, choosing alternative fuels, yeah. cleaner fuels. Uh, how does this put you in, in? In what position does this put your solution? Does it become obsolete in some time? No, actually, uh, um, uh, that's a bit the point on the horizon that we have. We see, luckily, many ship owners uh, who are now uh, ordering new builds that they um, go for dual fuel engines methanol and, and, and traditional fuel. They can use our system for the, 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 the regular fuel, the, the, the HFO, but in the future you can also capture the CO2 from other fuels and then uh, methanol made from uh, CO2 and hydrogen and that would then be what we see the future uh, for our system. So you capture, you keep capturing CO2 and that CO2 you reuse actually in the vessel to make your own uh, fuel and, uh, and saving with it. And we're already quite busy with, uh, with seeing... Uh, and you, know. you also said that the network for the CO2 uh, logistics is, is expanding. Yeah. Are you moving also to Asia or uh, other countries? Yeah. So what we do when a client comes to us, we had uh, a big client now, Eastern Pacific, that, that signed uh, uh, for a couple of units with us. They have a, a specific route, for example, uh, um, East, Coast, uh, un uh, East Coast Americas. So they start in New York, they go to Houston, and, uh, and Rio de Janeiro uh, and Sao Paulo. We found uh, an outlet for them in New York. We found an outlet for them in Sao Paulo, not yet in Houston, and not many greenhouses there. But we know that in Houston, there are different CO2 uh, solutions. They put it on the ground, for example. So we connect to those kind of projects as well. So we do it based on the demand of, uh, of a client at this stage. Uh, but we believe that when the ETS comes closer, we will um, expand even uh, quicker. Now, do you see, all, it's another uh, question that I've asked previously, but do you see companies trying to invest in, in the development of these systems in-house, or is it something that you are maybe accounting for already? Um, we see some of the bigger owners definitely um, um, trying to do that, uh, but in general, um, they were looking for a solution, so they, they will make an assessment of, let, let's say, what Eastern Pacific did. They picked 15 systems, they run it through an assessment, uh, through a tender process, and they picked uh, us. So that's, I think, what most owners do at this moment, because there are many solutions, um, and that's how, yeah, that's how they... Uh, yeah. Is there much investment in new solutions or innovation? There's especially now a lot, of, uh, a lot happening, um, especially because we see that the, the shipping industry needs to do something about their carbon. Uh, a lot is, a lot is uh, uh, being developed. Uh, but at the, at the, so far, we're the only solution that already works. So we're already capturing 30% CO2 on vessels. We could theoretically do 90, but then you need a lot of storage for the CO2. Um, so we, yeah, as far as we know, we're the only ones that, um, that there. So but there will be more coming, and it would actually be good for us. Now we are waiting on, on solutions in terms of CO2 capture that's smaller in package, but has uh, maybe a larger capacity to store. That's definitely a, a next step. For us, it's now very practical because we store it under ambient pressure and temperature. You don't need speci uh, specific equipment for it. The crew can, uh, doesn't need extra training. It's a very simple system, um, but we're developing. And at, at this moment, um, um, our business case is the filtry. People earn money on it. And when the CO2 becomes more, more of a business, I'm sure we will um, yeah, we'll develop in that as well. Uh, yeah. Is, are there similar solutions, may, or maybe are you working on something for other modalities? Is, is, it, is it feasible? Um, for other modalities, I think there are other solutions. They're more uh, re really focused on a marine-based system. On land-based, you more look to systems that also uh, purify, liquefy the, the, the CO2. 
but that requires a lot of energy, and that's what you on a vessel don't want. You don't want to um, um, produce more CO2 to uh, to liquefy your CO2, basically. Um, so for uh, other modalities, we do get the question uh, regularly. For example, for greenhouse, we we do use it, uh, but for other others, not. Uh, yeah. So, <coughs> what do you see as the next step for a solution and, and the innovation gen uh, landscape in general? Um, I think that really also depends on the on the difference in, in price. If we keep expanding that what we're doing now, we will have a good market share, and then um, um, we have a good network. So then, I think our system, our solution, will become a, a good player in the market, and then. Our next next step, I think, will be to see if we can uh, um, uh, have more outlets for our CO2. There are a lot of CO2 users, so I think that's that's the next step. Actually, the usage of CO2 and maybe the transportation of CO2. But at this moment, the the, the system how it is now works. Yeah. Brilliant. I uh, hope it continues working as well and improving. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the comments.